When I was a kid, someone asked me, "What is your dream?" That is when I start to think about it for the first time. From bedtime stories to cartoons to movies, the heroes are always on an important task, traveling to amazing places to meet their friends and lovers. That is how I know the best stories come from traveling. Therefore. It became my dream. There are so many things I haven't seen, so many places I haven't been to in this world. Even a lifetime may not be enough. I need to travel forever. But how? We are used to the lifestyle that we earn money from a job and spend it to live. How am I going to live a life traveling around the world with no money, no plan? No experience, but deep down, I know these are just excuses. I will never achieve my dream if I don't take the first step. So I decide to believe in myself and make it happen. I'm going to figure out how to travel forever. First thing I did was to find companions, and I found Alice and Xiaomi, who were willing to go on a road trip with me. And to make it a test, I had to find a way to travel with no money to start with. Went up to Tanzania where I climbed Kilimanjaro, and that one, that preparation was amazing because I had no preparation. All I knew is I wanted to do it. When I was living in India, I was、uh, selling. Clothes and jewelry from India, and I met a French guy, and he's travelled the world by just making bracelets and just selling them. And surprisingly, he actually makes pretty good amount of money and enough to get him onto the next destination. Since Alice is a dancer and I'm a painter, we decided to try street performing, more specifically, Chinese dancing and Chinese traditional painting. We started out from Los Angeles. We went to Venice and Santa Monica, which are all famous tourism areas. I sold hand-painted Chinese fans and umbrellas. And sometimes. People came for Chinese names and portraits too. Apparently, street performing kind of worked. It covered our food, our gas, and we made our way from Los Angeles to San Francisco, Sacramento, and Portland. And that was when we ran out of money. <laughs> Two, three.、Uh... Thirty-six. We're here at this、uh, whatever park, and I'm so mad right now because we paid six dollars for the parking, and now we only earn two quarters. Running out of money is a little bit scary. If I can find a way to live for free, that would be awesome. So what are you doing? 
Um, I'm couch surfing. See if there's anyone will accept us in Seattle, so we don't we won't have to pay for a hotel. It's like they offer you a couch or a bed or anything that you can sleep for free in someone's home. Yeah. The best experiences I've ever had traveling have always been with local people. So with websites like Couchsurfing or Airbnb, they offer access automatically to meeting local people and you will have a completely different experience than what you would do if you go stay in a hotel, stay in a hostel and you just get it immersed in the culture so much faster. Uh, well, I was getting really active on couchsurfing and I looked up on the local groups and an LA group there was a posting for teaching English in Moscow. And the whole deal was that you could uh, teach from 7 to 10 at night, you have uh, given a place to stay, uh, food to eat. So we managed to find several hosts along the way and that saved us a lot of money. No other experience is waking up in a new place and not really knowing what's going to happen. It's scary, it's exciting, there's just so many things that just, it's so good for the human spirit when you're traveling. He said, where are you going? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, come and stay with my family. Bruce is a part-time professor who teaches in University of Washington. And we stayed at his house for three days. We cooked together, and he took us on a tour of the Bainbridge Island, which was amazing. <laughs> and the other thing I've just started doing is warm showers, and, and uh, which is a bicycle <coughs> website for people who travel on bikes and couch surfing, which I. I uh, when I went to Spain and Portugal earlier this year, I, I stayed with four different sets of people that I met. So actually, she gave me her bed and she slept on the couch because she did work at night. So I slept in her bed for a month. And every experience I've had with couch surfing has been fantastic. Like, I'm the biggest advocate, I'm such a fan. And if I have the opportunity to use it, I always will. Later on, we took the ferry to Seattle. It was a 20-minute trip on a huge cruise ship, where you can see the most beautiful view of Seattle City. We went to the famous Pike Place Market, but our performance didn't go very well. All the spots were taken by other performers. Luckily, we visited my cousin who lives there, and she introduced us to some freelance work from the internet. We do a combination of uh, teaching English and doing some sort of online work. Online work? Yeah, any work that you can connect online and do work there. Who are professional poker players and they play poker online and that supported them very well. Web design and a fantastic job to do and so they're still earning money back home but living in countries where it's double the value or triple or what, however the exchange rate's working at the time. We did an editing job and a comic book commission and finally got enough money to continue our trip. On our way back home, we decided to go to the Crater Lake National Park, but we got there too late. Now we are kind of lost, and the gas is like not enough for us to get out of this place. So we try to find a gas station or a lodge, lodging or something to eat because we're out of food as well. So, <laughs> so we just drive, drive, drive and then we finally found some, some place but their gas station is closed. It's illegal to 
uh, feel uh, to to feel uh, by yourself uh, in Oregon. So you have to come to this camping ground without being registered. We are hungry, and there's not a lot. God damn hungry! <laughs> so our plan was to sleep in our car, get up super early in the morning, sneak out the campground, get some gas in the village, and then drive off to Crater Lake. Then we met a hitchhiker on the mountain and gave him a ride. My name is Brad, but my trail name is Mr. Chips. I travel on my feet. I hike. And this is my home. My friend Andy and I decided that instead of studying for our, our final exams, we'd hitchhike out to South Dakota and go to the Black Hills. You could be sitting there for maybe an hour waiting for a ride. It seems like forever because you don't know what's gonna happen. But in a way, it's really exciting. And I camped out a bunch of times. I had my bicycle, I had a, a tent and a sleeping bag. I met a person in a hostel there. We went up to the, the, the uh, game reserve up in, near Byra and we got stuck in there. We had to camp out in the grounds and we woke up in the morning and there was an elephant walking by. Yeah. And finally, we saw the beautiful sunrise over the crater lake. At that moment, we forgot about everything else. And all of a sudden, I was sitting there, and I just felt all these particles. It was like an understanding of becoming one with wherever I was, you know, without any fear or anything, just it was beautiful. Life is, you get one opportunity and you get one chance. You need to make the most of it. If I always follow my heart and I believe in my dreams, then my dreams will come true. I realized that I found what I've been looking for. I've learned so many things about traveling. It's time for me to take it to the next level. So I bought a ticket and I kept on going. Going on the journey to different countries, different cultures around the world. On the way of finding out how to achieve my dream, I'm already living it. Every step I travel, I learn something new. I saw breathtaking sceneries and met so many interesting people. There's just some magic about traveling that can open your mind and set you free. There's a Chinese saying, Tian wei gai, di wei lu, si hai wei jia. My journey will continue. My dream will not end. What about you?